first we did this assignment, right, which is the color wheel. And many of you have done it before. Some of you have never done it before. But it doesn't matter how many times you do a color wheel. As an artist, you'll probably do it more. Than. This is the compliments, right, that we did. This is very important because this is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to three paintings, all right, three paintings, each one using a compliment. And once you know this, you know everything. You know everything. The only thing to add are a couple different color theory mixes to it that build on top of this, and hints and hues, okay, which we already talked about, which is in here, okay, which is the white and the dark around the back. Okay, but we're not going to use black for our paintings. And so you can see I'm working on a small painting here. You can work on a larger one. If I wanted to do this whole space, I would have picked a larger canvas, okay? I want the objects should be about this size. If you're working really tiny, you're gonna struggle. Okay, these are the rules, all right? Now, the reason I'm giving you rules and restrictions is so that you can grow. You're like, I'm teaching you these core principles that you will remember for the rest of your life as an artist. Even 10 years down the road, you're gonna remember this class. That's my goal as a teacher. Right? These fundamental core things. They have to be in the back of your brain, ingrained for when you are working on your masterpieces. Later on, you're always going to remember these. These are the rules of the game that you will break. Okay? So we're working with two opposite colors and white. So I'm working here on this painting with orange and blue. I have two blues to find my true blue, right? Now if you're working with red, you can have two reds. You can have the alizarin crimson and the cadmium red. Here I have two blues, and I have a little bit of yellow. That's cheating. I'm cheating, okay? That's because my orange leans red. And I know my orange leans red, so I threw that yellow on there, only to brighten the orange. This is Naples yellow, and you can have it with all of your mixtures because it acts like a white. It's a very nice, calm, soothing white, okay? That's not really white. It has a brown tone to it, and so it does help you out a little bit. So in essence, because you're using that, you're not being completely kosher to this assignment, but we're still being pretty close. Okay, so number one, you have three values on every step. That means this foreground has three values. Before I start painting, 90% of your work is here. I often see people not appreciating or respecting your palette. Your palette is the most important thing, okay? If you're a musician, your instrument is the most important thing, right? You don't just go out there and start playing an orchestra without a tuned instrument, do you? That's exactly with painting. So if you have a messy palette, you're gonna not be able to control it. Working thin to thick, that means if you like to have nice thick strokes, like some of you do, not all of you, because if that's your personal expression, that's not what we're doing. We're not doing personal expression, and I know that's hard for artists, okay? But that's not what we're doing. We're doing a lesson to learn about color theory. Now, you can put thick strokes on and have that nice um, clay kind of feeling built up afterwards, but not to begin with. And because you will drown in your paint, especially if not, you're not used to oil paint. Okay, so you work thin to thick. That means I can see through the canvas, okay, the first layer. This is first layer. I get everything in before I do second layer. Okay, you do, don't make all your pretty orange, and then keep working on that when you haven't built up every single thing to the same level. Okay, we're working dark to light. Okay, that's how oil paint works. It's the opposite of watercolor. And it's a little bit different than acrylic because acrylic dries. We are working wet on wet. When you come back to a new day, it's dry. But during the day, it's wet. Wet on wet is the goal, okay? S-E to neat. That means you're going to not get in there and make every little shiny detail, okay? We're gonna be looser and then get tighter. No blending until all colors are laid out, okay? So remember the video you saw. Everybody saw the video because I checked everybody, okay? So that video is not what you have to do. You don't have to paint in that style, but you have to keep it in the back of your head that you wanna blend after you lay out the colors because otherwise we have a blending Frenzy. Blending frenzy is a thing, and it's an addiction, and we're not going to have that addiction in this room, okay? 
So you lay out the colors. You can see here for the white, I didn't blend. I'm just laying them down. Now, if I had more time in this setting, I might have blended them while they were wet, but I'm just laying them down, okay? As far as brushes go, in order to not have paint all over your clothing, and all over is, you ha can't have it all over your hands. So, when you are working with your brushes, you have a neat workspace. You take care of, this is your instrument, okay? This is your instrument, this is the music. That means, this is more important. Do you understand? This is not important. This is the music, this is the effect. This is the most important thing. Okay, I really have a hard time getting this across to people in the past, so this is why I'm putting so much energy into this discussion, this lecture. 90% of your painting is on your palette because it's all about getting the right color. And that is why we're doing this exercise. You are going to match the color. We are not doing creative expression match that orange to that orange. It is an exercise, okay? And you're gonna do it in three different times. Then we're gonna move on to a beautiful creative expression with your new knowledge, okay? You need to be wiped down like this every time you use them. That's how you keep your space clean. Trust me, it took me 20 years to learn this. So I'm giving it to you now. I used to be a messy painter and now I can paint the most beautiful clothes and never get paint on them. Now, also, your workspace needs to be to the right of you, if you're right-handed. And then your water and your oil, don't do this, okay, don't do this. Take this off. Your water and your oil, your rag and your brushes all lay down like this. Okay, it's nice and pretty. This is your instrument. You're going to keep it nice. I want you washing your brushes over and over again. This is not going to happen, okay? You're not going to sit here and do this until your brush is not blue anymore so you can get that orange or yellow in it. You're going to have a brush for the orange and yellow and a brush for the blue. That one's designated to my cool colors and this one's designated to my warm colors. And I don't rarely ever wash my brushes. I just use my rag, okay? That way you can integrate this into this because this color here is this color, right? So there's color harmony, it's called color harmony on your painting, okay? Everything reflects around everything else. You did this in your apple exercise that you drew with a pencil, remember when you watched that video? See how it all builds, okay? So everything in the environment is that white, this isn't white. And if you're painting glass, there's no such thing as glass. All you are painting is what it reflects or what's behind it. So if you have one of the glass pieces, do not paint the glass. Ignore the glass, it doesn't exist. All it is is looking through the glass or reflecting the glass, okay? Same with white. And that is why I chose white for this photograph, which I took, okay? Because it, it's nothing but a reflection of everything around it. So bounce light. I wanna talk about bounce light. This reflection is all dark. See how I painted it all dark? That's my first go. Now I'm going to consider that there's bounce light onto my orange and I might put some orange highlights in here. That's secondary. Not, that means there's blue in my reflection, okay? This is my favorite size. This size I could use for everything, see it? This one I don't like as much, it's huge, okay? For this size. This is good for background, that's about it, okay? This tiny one, I don't really want to use a lot either because I'm the, that means I'm getting up there in doing this. That's the end, okay? We're also cooking a cupcake. When you cook a cupcake, you have to mix the batter and you do not put the sprinkles on when you have wet batter, okay? That is detail that will be at the end and they're like music. It, I, I, painting is so much like music. So you have high notes and you have low notes. Those high notes are the highlights, okay? and they're not to be put on at the beginning. They're secondary, they're later. And you are limited in your palette. Three times you'll be limited in your palette. So however fast you go is however uh, fast you can be done. Then when you're done, which is either a landscape, a photo, uh, portrait, or an advanced still life. And when I say advanced, I mean this time I'm in advanced. That means like you can set it up yourself, you can do lace, you can do whatever. Second thing is you're going to use color theory, but you will not be restricted to this color theory. 
So we'll talk more about that. I'll give you some videos to watch on that. A lot of the images you look at of famous artists, they use color theory, but they're not limited to this particular color theory. Okay, there's other color theories, and I think some of you are familiar with them. Like split complement. Does everybody know what that is? Yeah, we, just, we take orange, but instead of going across to blue, we go to their neighbor. Blue-violet and blue-green would be their neighbor. That's a split complement. And it's beautiful. Okay, it's elegant, and that is why we, uh, we learn com uh, color theory, just like music theory. You don't just listen to random music, it's, it's composed, okay? Well, paintings are also composed, not just in their um, composition, but in their colors. The most important thing is the color. Beyond composition, beyond talent, anything is color, okay? And you guys will understand how important it is, and it is almost the only important thing. All right, so that is one. There are others, and I'll show you the different ones, but you're going to pick one color theory and do your long study in that, okay? After you do three of these. Restriction, restrictions. Luckily in this class, I don't have any, too many rebellious people who are like, I don't, I already know all this. I got that a lot last time. I already know all this. I don't want to do this. I, you know, I want freedom, okay? But that's not actually what this class is about. It's a to be design class. So in, when you go to your painting class next semester, whatever you do, you're just gonna really blossom, okay? Okay.